Love everyone. I miss being class with you all. Hope you are all doing well and staying safe. My name is Keisha Lee Taylor, and I am doing my research project on the body of communication. I became interested in this subject during my time playing at Mendocino College, and I realized whenever we were quiet on the floor, we heard nothing. I became I began watching film and other higher teens, and was able to experience that volleyball is a game energy and communication. The team that brings the most consistent and unified energy. Each play, each point, they are going to win. Throughout my presentation, I will dive into the sport and show you how it relies on nonverbal and verbal communication. Thank you. I hope you enjoy. So you're about to watch a volleyball game, but you don't know the rules or you need a refresher. Well, I'm here to help you. I'm Rudy Nectarin, and these are the basic rules you need to know about volleyball. A volleyball court is 18 meters long and 9 meters wide, with a net that stretches from one side of the court to the other. In a volleyball game, there are 12 players on the court. Six players from each team are on both sides of the court. Three players are at the net, and the other three are at the back of the court. The player who serves the ball to the opposing team is at the back right corner. When serving, the player is behind the end line and must serve the ball over the net to the other team. If the ball does not go over the net or they step over the end line, the other team has possession of the ball. As the ball goes over the net, the team receiving the ball may only touch the ball three times before it goes over the net. Let's say this team spikes the ball and the opposing team misses. The team gets possession of the ball again. But the players rotate clockwise. The player served last time moves to their left, and the player who was the opposite hitter moves down, and they serve the ball. In order for a team to get a point, the opposite team either doesn't get the ball over the net, or the ball comes in contact with the floor on their side, or they hit the ball and it lands outside the court. That's all the time I have today. I hope these points helped you understand. The theme that I placed on my presentation is the key to surviving a volleyball match is communication. I chose this theme because of the title of our book. And I realized that in a volleyball game, the point in the winning the match is life. You are competing. You are in this mode of fight or flight. You're in this mode of wanting to survive and win this point. So teams must be a cohesive, a cohesive unit. <laughs> They must play, communicate, and move as one. Each player on the court shifts with the ball and each and each other, creating a fluid motion. This is like one of those old school puppets, and you're tilting it one way, you're tilting it the other way. Whichever way you're tilting it, each piece is moving with the other piece. That is how it is on the court. All right. So nonverbal and verbal communication are both essential in being a successful volleyball team. is I'm going to do what's called the 3C drill. This is not my drill. This is Bon Shemansky's drill, the coach at Marquette, and I saw him do this quite some time ago at the convention. Uh, it's a recycled drill. I do this drill for the purpose of creating energy and uplifting my kids' readiness for practice. This drill can be done after a long weekend where your team maybe doesn't perform the way they need to. They come off of a two-weekend loss, maybe. Uh, maybe it's a lull in practice where, you know, you're going for two and a half hours, about 145, their energy level and focus starts to dip. This is a really good high energy drill. We're going to play this game to 25 points. These guys on the floor will get one point for communication. And obviously you as a coach have to define what communication is and what communication level you want. Number two, they get a point for covering. That means proper posture. And it means also being stopped on the point of contact when the ball goes over the, the plane of the net. The third point is for celebration. And for them to get a point today, they are going to have to celebrate like they just won the national championship. And if they don't, no point. Easiest point they're going to get, the celebration point. Okay? Obviously, we want them to celebrate the positive. We don't want... We got two. 
Verbal communication. The number one thing a coach consistently enforces on their team is to talk. You learn that you are able to and should be communicating the whole time on the court and on the bench. If you have ever witnessed a volleyball game, the uproar of verbal communication that is key to their success may, ca may come off as a jumble of nonsense, nonsense from an untrained ear. Here I will begin to explain the purposes and process of verbal communication. Each point starts with a service. Prior to the serve, players on the court are identifying their opponents, shouting to their team where the hitters, setter, and libero is. Once served, the receiving team all together shout, Balls up, serve, service, and then they signal the teammate that the ball is going towards. The receiving teammate is yelling, mine, got it, got it. Once the player receives the ball, they bump. Once the receiving player bumps the ball, she's communicating to the setter, and the setter communicates with her on to where to place the ball. During this time, the hitters are communicating with the setter on where to position the ball for the assist, while the rest of the team is communicating to the hitter where the open holes and opportunities to score are. The team must also communicate to the hitter if there are any blockers up, if so, how many. While doing this, everyone is communicating to cover, just in case the ball is, is blocked and then put down back onto your side. I decided to list some jargon from volleyball because it plays such a huge role in our communication. You must communicate so fast and so often about everything going around, around us that these little shortcuts help. So first off, I'm starting with ace. Ace is a point off a serve. Block is front row to sympathy. <laughs> Block is a front row defensive move to reject a kill. Kill is offensive move that scores point. A bump is the first basic touch of the ball, hands together and low to receive and make a soft pass. A set is an assist, setting up a hit. Cut is a cross-court movement of the ball or the player. Dig is an intense version of a bump when a, when a player is receiving an attack from a hard spike. Cover is following the movement of the ball and teammate, and the teammate making the play, creeping in in all the vulnerable areas of the court. Pancake means to lay out flat with your whole body across the court and just saving a ball. Free is the free ball. It's freely bumped over. 
Peppers to practice bump, set, and spike with a partner. Assist is to set up the setter, set up the hitter for a success, successful kill. My apologies. Tip is a sneaky attack at the net where the player softly puts the ball over the net. A roll shot is hitting the ball with your palm facing up and arm motions upwards instead of a full swing. A floater is a type of serve that is done with a small amount of force that floats over the net and is hard to tell where it's going to land. A dump is uh, an attack by a setter. It's perceived as a set, but then it just gets dumped and pushed over down onto the other side of the net. A, B, C, and D, those are all back row hitting cues. That is what the back row yells at the setter to let them know they are ready to hit. And vice versa, when the setter wants to set the back row, they yell those letters. Facial is one of the most hurtful jargons, it is receiving an attack or kill straight to the face or off the head. Service is when the ball is served and put into play. One, two, three, four, five, six. Those are positions on the court and also front row hitting cues. Shag is to go shag the balls. And you got to go around the gym and collect all the balls. There is a million more I can probably think of, of jargon and slang of volleyball, and it's a crazy world, but very interesting. <laughs> I just nonverbal communication. A major part of what verbal communication is used for in volleyball is to bring awareness to what your opponent's body language and placement on the court indicates. To read your opponent's body language is the next step in comprehending communication in volleyball and being one with not only your team, but the other team as well. Here I, ha I have listed some examples. Nonverbal community. and we formed an entire practice around the subject. Tom Black, Ron Larson, Karch Karai, Hugh McCutcheon were some of the fore forefronters on this topic, correct? Yeah. Okay. And uh, what we're going to do is one of Tom's favorite drills uh, for reading the game. And what this does is it works a lot on what the defensive players are seeing. Yeah. So it's a great drill to help your defenders actually start to pick up are they looking at the line areas. So, Tom, you want to tell us a little bit about the drill and what it's called? All right, so pretty simple drill. We're going to play a round to ten. Uh, I'm going to bounce the ball to the offensive side over there. They're going to hit it over. And, uh, excuse me, I'm going to bounce the ball to the defensive side. They're going to hit it over. And then we're going to start. Uh, whoever wins the rally is going to get a plus. If the defensive side gets a dig, they get a plus. And on this side, if this side is able to set the ball over and it drops, it's a point for the offense and a minus point for the defense. If the offensive side is able to roll shot and it drops, then it's a plus for the offense and a minus for the defense. So we want to read the set direction and we want to be able to read the hitter's shoulder. So we're trying to create points that uh, plus and minus points that emphasize that. And in terms of the hitting, are they on the ground hitting or are they no, no, jumping? No, we're jumping and hitting. And you can have them hit back row or front row. We're going to hit front row, but you can vary it according to your league level. Uh, Excellent. Time. USA, man, you probably want to go back row. <laughs> There's no block. Okay, well, hit is good. Here on the 
this slide, I have included a video of an example of great communication. This match was held in San Diego, California, December 2019. I had the opportunity to watch one match of the Triple CAA Women's Volleyball Championships. It was a great experience to witness their high levels of energy and communication. Both teams were amazing, neither better than the other. It just came down to who kept the momentum going and used communication to their advantage. Each of the women on the court, each of the bench players on their feet, the energy the crowd puts off and the coaches, every aspect ties, ties into determining who comes out on top. Athleticism is the balance of mental and physical. Each sport relies on athletes to be physically skilled and mentally prepared to compete. Before playing college sports and watching higher level playing, I did not pay much attention to the communication factor involved. I had grown to like being a quiet person and I thought that I could also compete this way, the silent and deadly type. <laughs> silent and deadly type. I did not find much joy playing this way. I learned that I must open myself up to be vulnerable, expressive, and true the whole time I am on the court. You must give it your all, physically, mentally, and soulfully. It gets exhausting, but it's always worth the energy. I hope that this presentation was able to open your mind and heart to this sport. It is a beautiful sight and feeling when you are flowing with your team as one. Whatever your passion is, pursue it, play it, practice and learn from it. Turn life into an art. With anything you choose to do, communication can enhance it. Thank you. Please enjoy this video of my 2019 Mendocino volleyball team.